So Roblox has released a new preferred input API, which is a great replacement for checking the device the user is playing on from the user input service. And I'm going to be overviewing that in the video. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's just get to it. Oh, and let me just change something because I kind of forgot about this, but anyway. So for this update, you don't actually need to enable anything. It's actually just built into Studio and you can even use it in live games, although it's a beta feature. But how do I use it exactly? And well, we first need to add a script somewhere, like for example the starter player and then the starter player scripts, where I'm just going to add a local script and just name this one preferred input. And here I'm just going to zoom it in and just place it to the side. So like I said in the intro, this is going to be a way Way easier and way better way of checking the device the player is on based on the input. But the new preferred input is basically a new property for the user input service that we get by the game get service then user input service. And if I just do local preferred input and then just do user input service that preferred input, you can see that we are going to have the enum preferred input, which queries the primary input type a player is using based on the anticipated user behavior. And what this means is that whenever your input changes, it's also going to be changing this property. And this API is actually going to remember the last input you were using. But anyway, if I just fill this one out, I can for example just print out the preferred input. And if I were to do a playtest, you can see that it printed out the inam preferred input and then keyboard and mouse. So already I don't have to do like local function check input then check if the for example is keyboard enabled by doing user input service that keyboard enabled and user input service that mouse enabled and then do like three different if checks to check if the player is actually using the keyboard and mouse because all of this is going to be stored in this property. But yeah. What I'm going to be doing now is show you how this property is going to be changing from the user input service and basically end inside that. Where I'm just going to make a local function, name this one on input changed, fire this one immediately, as well as do user input service, get property change signal on the preferred input property, and then I'm going to be connecting the on input changed. So whenever this property is going to be changing, we are going to do something in this function. But right here again, I'm going to do local preferred input is going to be user input input service that preferred input. And right now just to showcase this off, I should have my gamepad right here where I'm just going to print out the preferred input. And I'm going to do another playtest and right here you can see that it's going to be the keyboard and mouse. But now if I move with my gamepad, it's going to already change into the gamepad. And if I use my mouse again, it's going to be keyboard and mouse again. And all of this is done with a single property, where previously just for comparison, I'm going to be copying the code from the dev forum that does all of this with the previous user input service method. And the comparison from 9 lines of code would be basically this. So yeah, right here you're getting the user input service and the string value, then you check if it's keyboard, mouse, touch or gamepad, then connect it to the last input type changed, where again you just set everything into the string value that was created on top, and then you listen to the property change signal and then just for example do whatever this was doing previously, where I would just need to do print and then print out the value. So yeah, from 34 lines, it was basically just reduced into well 9, where now it's again keyboard and mouse, and if I change it, it's gamepad. So yeah, they basically just clamped all of the previously shown code into one single property where everything is happening and inside that now. Where you don't need to make all of this unnecessary logic anymore to check if the player is using the gamepad, keyboard or whatever, since this property is going to be updating dynamically. And right now, I really quickly just want to mention something and I can't stress it how many times I was just trying to play a Roblox game, right? And my character was working fine, but if there was an interaction in the game, it would only work on my gamepad and since I play different games on my PC too, like for example Elden Ring, right? I play that on a gamepad. But basically, since I have the gamepad connected, right? The input in these Roblox games was only working on it and I couldn't do anything if it comes to interacting with the game. I could just like walk or do whatever. Since the developers also didn't implement any like input changing logic, so I was just stuck there on a keyboard and mouse with a gamepad controls. Like I remember that happening to me on like one of the FNAF games. Like I think it was on like forgotten memories or whatever. But anyway, enough of me ranting. Right now I'm just gonna go to the dev forum post and give you a little bit more information about this update. So yeah. And here is the dev forum post about the client beta introducing preferred input and improved touch capabilities. Where a Roblox app is giving a TLDR saying that this update is basically a release of the new API in the client beta which is the preferred input. This adaptive property makes it easier to build cross-platform input behavior by exporting 
exposing the primary input type available to a player. So like I mentioned previously, something like keyboard and mouse if you are on a PC, touch input if you are using a phone or a tablet, and controller if you are on a console. But continuing, it's especially useful when having multiple input devices available for use. Whether they are on a gamepad, touchscreen or a keyboard, preferred input is your new go-to for handling button prompts and input labels, as well as UI models and device-specific interactions. And something to note is that you can actually publish the preferred input in your experience today. So even though it's beta, this feature is alive in Roblox games. And here they are saying that next week, which which is like three weeks ago, we'll be rolling out improvements to how the input is detected across devices, including a fix for which devices are reported as touch enabled and improvements to touch and gesture capabilities. If you use touch enabled to determine when to display mobile based UI or touch controls, we want to highlight how this update might impact you and share how preferred input can help, especially for experiences that run on mixed input devices. So yeah, this is basically a summarized information, but I'm going to go over the different stuff right here that I also shown in the studio section before. But yeah, here you have the how to use the preferred input, and here they are saying that the value of the preferred input property changes based on the value of legacy user input service properties, such as the keyboard enabled, gamepad enabled, and touch enabled as well, as well as the player's most recent interaction with a connected gamepad or a keyboard mouse, to provide a reliable default view of how a player is interacting with your experience. There are three items in the preferred input enum. One is the keyboard and mouse, which is the player that has connected or most recently interacted with a keyboard or mouse. And note that the preferred input remembers the player's last configuration when they start the client. Then the gamepad, which is the same thing except with a gamepad, as well as the touch to check if the player's device has touch capabilities. And no other input scheme is available or connected. So there are two things that I'm kind of getting from this. First one is that they kind of merge two different things from the user input service API into the preferred input API. One is basically just checking the enums from the user input service, and the other one is the event from the user input service too, which was the input changed or whatever, basically being combined and implemented on the engine side. And the other thing is that the API now is probably going to have a priority system for determining the preferred input, because basically the touch is already checking if there isn't a keyboard or a mouse connected to it. And sometimes I remember some people telling me that if they for example were using a tablet and they connected a mouse and keyboard to it, like you know, just these small like tablet cases with the keyboards, because how usually the user input service work is that it wouldn't always catch the keyboard and mouse since a lot of the developers were checking the touch input first. Usually if you are using the user input service, I think they also gave a little snippet of code right here, yeah you would basically just use this function right here and a lot of people weren't even using the last input type change event that I was talking about previously. So if for example the script registered that I was using a gamepad or had a gamepad connected to my PC, it would just be stuck on this gamepad, although I had a keyboard and mouse, so yeah. Now going back, here are recommendations on when to use the preferred input. One is when you have different hotkeys or button prompts per input type. Another one is when you want to switch the UI layouts based on input. And the last one is when you want to reduce noisy UI switching on devices with mixed input devices. Or it would be better to word it with like those mixed inputs or mixed input types. And yeah, this is basically the snippet of code that I was showing previously, where right now you have like a few lines of code and you just check the property change signal on the preferred input and change the preferred input based on the engine's new API, rendering the change. So yeah, this is basically like a huge life savior from having to write all of this code. And this is also mostly going to help a lot of new developers too. Since trust me, like sometimes having to deal with the conditions of the input could basically be a lot of work. So yeah, I am happy that this is actually a W change. But yeah, when should I use the last input type or user input service X enabled? And keyboard enabled or gamepad enabled or detach enabled and last user input type will not be deprecated. And they are useful when you need more detailed information about the player input, but when you want to build for flexibility and adapt to a player's current input scheme, preferred input is your best out of the toolbox. Out of the box tool, sorry. <laughs> and upcoming changes, which is the fix that I read on top, and it's basically just saying that the device with the touch enabled will now correctly return the touch enabled to true. And this is primarily going to impact Windows devices, where previously certain platforms like the touch enabled Windows laptops and 
handheld PCs were being reported as touch enabled on phones. And here they are saying again that it's available to use. And right here, what do you need to do? And if you use touch enabled to determine the input availability, no changes are needed. This update just fixes the inconsistencies. And if you use touch enabled to determine which UI element to show, we recommend switching to the preferred input. It's more robust for cross-platform design and avoids false positives on hybrid devices. And then we have made with love. Well, shout out to these people for working on the update. And yeah, that's about everything for the the forum post and that about it is going to be everything for this video too so again leave a like and subscribe to support the channel also check out my patreon page and thanks everyone for watching hope you had a nice day and see you guys